And now it's time for Recovery Today with Candy Rose and Friends, a 12-step teaching segment. So grab your Bible and your notepad. John 8.32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God's Word shows us how we can not only become addiction-free, but how to stay free. Jesus loves you. Hello and welcome to Recovery Today with Candy Rose and Friends. This is Barbara Ferguson and Becky Brewer. Hi. Hello. And we are bringing you uh, lessons from the two 12-step books that I've written, Recovery Today, The Shepherd's Way, which are on Amazon. And uh, so if you'd like to go to Amazon and check it out, uh, you have my permission to even use these uh, books uh, at, for your support group or one-on-one -on -one or, or, or even for yourself. Now, we, I've condensed these. So what we're doing today, we're teaching from Volume 2, Lesson 4. And the title is Professing But Not Possessing. Hmm. This is the fourth step using the 12 Truths to Freedom. Examine destructive actions and inward attitudes. Mm. Mm. Psalms 51, 6. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. It is a well-known fact that many people go to church every week, have not had a true conversion, been born again. They profess to know God, but by their actions and lifestyle, you can tell that they're not really possessing Christ. The Holy Spirit, see, enables you to have a lifestyle change. It's referred to as being born again. Hmm. Yes. John 3.3 3 says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Titus 1.16, They profess to know God, but in works they deny him being ab abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every mm. good work. Wow, it's powerful. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? The meaning of examine is to inspect, probe, investigate, review. That verse tells us to check ourselves to make sure we have had a true conversion. Acts 3.19, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance means a changing of the mind, turning from our sin to God, a radical change within our heart. Conversion means transformation, change of heart, change of belief, a metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means a transformation, a series of changes, conversion, change in appearance and behavior, personality change, radical change, a startling change. So true Christianity is all about us becoming different or changed to be more like our example, Jesus. Amen. Another way to test and examine if you are born again is by this next verse. It states, the old has passed away and the new has come. Is your old ungodly lifestyle and behaviors gone? Do you have a new godly behavior and a new lifestyle? 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Are there obvious changes in your life? We are saved by grace through faith, but the Bible also says faith without works is dead. So our good works obedience prove we are in faith, born again. Abraham was counted as righteous when he used his faith and good works obedience together. Amen. That's right. And Barbara, what do you think about this? Well, I was one of those people that we're talking about here that for years... I was a Christian, mm -hmm. um, but my my life wasn't any different than than any you know than any other non Christian. I went to church. I actually was very involved in my church. I taught Sunday school. I, I led Bible school. Um, I I I even was um, 
I even was the treasurer or the secretary at, at the church for a time. So when people looked wow. at me, they thought wow. that I was this good Christian woman. Wow. But, but in my life at home, I wasn't any different than anyone else. And one day, thanks to the Lord and the Holy Spirit, I came to that realization. And it was terrifying to me because I know God knows my heart and He knows my mind. And He saw my life. And I did know enough to believe in heaven and hell. But I just wasn't, I did, hadn't made the commitment and the change. So once I did make that commitment and change and start reading my Bible and know what the truth was, I did start to change. And it was really not through my effort other than my effort to get to know the Word. But the Holy Spirit worked in me to make those changes. So mm, I guess good. I'm trying to say, don't feel like this is going to be something you have to do. Mm. The only thing you have to do is be willing to turn to God, yes. to spend time with Him, to spend time in the Word, and the Holy Spirit will change you. That's good. And yes. um, your life yes. will be, di be di different. And, you know, at the time, it, does, it may not, even now, I've been walking with the Lord for quite a few years. And even now I think, you know, I'm just not good enough. But when I look back at where I was and see where I am now, I see the fruits of, of His His work in my life. Um, they call it the fruits of the Spirit. And it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithful, gentleness, and self-control. And when you can see, well, like when I, can, when I look at myself and I can see that I used to be angry and bitter and jealous and mm. and and now I'm not. I, you know, people do things to me, and I don't even really get angry. And if I do, I'm over it right away. That's not me. Yeah. That's not how I was. It's the Holy Spirit in me. Oh, that's so good. That is yes, so good. yes. And He makes all the difference. And of course, this one really means a lot to me because it talks specifically about um, the the old passing away and you becoming a new creation in, in Christ. Yes. And so when I was set free in the South Carolina prison, and I knew I was set free because I was being tormented every single day of my life with this, with this addiction, this IV drug user that I was, where I would shoot up in the neck for 15 straight years. And I knew I was set free because that torment was gone. And so I knew the old had passed away, and I knew that I was a new creation in Christ. Mm. Yes. That's However... So that the the renewing of the mind is something that takes place over a long time it's still taking place the renewing of the mind and so because i had so many years in one lifestyle everything about my new lifestyle was completely changed i didn't hang around the same people everything was different i got into church surrounded myself with godly people but there were still things in my mind i had to battle like i had a lot of fear and all of that had to come with growing my faith in, in Christ and other things that were that I was attached to from that old lifestyle that just through that walk with the Lord had to be let go of and, and the mind had to be renewed and, and it's so, a lifelong process. Really. Yeah. It, it doesn't is. it doesn't yeah. end. Sanctification. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well and for me, um, I had a radical conversion. <laughs> Praise God. I was a stripper and a prostitute and had a stripping business uh, in the Chicago area till my mother led me to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise over the telephone. Yes. <laughs> praying mother. Matter of fact, if you're praying for your loved one, just keep on praying. Show unconditional love and, uh, and be that good influence in front of them. But what happened to me was I was addicted to uh, alcohol, drugs, pornography, lust, gambling, and uh, But when I made a commitment, and that was in one of our other lessons about a commitment, mm -hmm. when I made a commitment to Jesus, the Lord just took that and the old did go and wow. the new came. I didn't even want to do those things right. anymore. Um, uh, but here, here, here's, I want to tell you something though. After three and a half years of living for the Lord with my whole heart, I end up backsliding. I end up living with somebody and backslid mm. for two miserable years. And I had, and I even tried to go back to my old stripping business. I even had somebody tell me once, 
well, why do you have to let go of that stripping business? <laughs> Can't you be a Christian anyway? Oh my gosh. You know, some <laughs> people's concept of Christianity mm -hmm. is that, and matter of fact, they've had a lot of people that they see that say they're Christians right. and they're not right. living the life. They're right. professing it, but not possessing it. And what happens is that people tend to think you can do anything right. you want That's and good. be a Christian. That's good, Kenny. Some people think because they're born into the denomination that, that they're, uh, that they're automatically a Christian or their parents are. But you know, Christianity is a lifestyle. That's the, right. and, and, in, and in the Bible, you just read where the old has passed away and, and here comes the new. Well, that happens by that born again experience when you say yes with your whole heart. And when you do say yes with your whole heart, that's when the change comes. There's preachers on TV that still give the impression that you're okay. Grace, yes, we're saved by grace, but the Bible also tells us that, that don't turn the grace of God into mm. lasciviousness. And that means, you know what lasciviousness means? I looked that up, a disregard for rules. Wow. See, there are things in God's word that says we are not to partake of, which one of them is fornication, which I was doing. But you know, the world says it's okay to live with somebody. Right. You know, you gotta find out if you're gonna love them, if you're gonna be together, blah, blah, blah. But you know, God has rules in the Bible to uh, things to help us so we don't get hurt even. Yeah. It's not to Hardest. be mean to yeah, us. That's right. He's Far not withholding hard. good things from us. Those things end up hurting us. Right. But anyway, I just want to encourage you today, if you're hanging on to anything, to just let it go. Amen. But and but we're gonna have a prayer here in a little bit. But before, I wanna show a little clip of Barbara. Barbara Ferguson is a nurse, an RN. And uh, she has, uh, will let you know the dangers of doing certain drugs and alcohol, what it does to your body and your mind. So please stay tuned to this. As a matter of fact, I have these little clips on our, on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is Addiction Free Candy Rose with the K, K-E-N-D-I. And you'll find those. And you may want to send those to somebody that maybe is using right. those things. That's good. Or any of our shows. We've been put, I've been starting to put more of our shows this one and addiction free on there. So now let's watch that clip. Hi friends, I'm Barbara Ferguson and at Candy Rose's request, I am bringing you another segment of addiction health dangers. Today I'm gonna to share with you about opioids. Opioids include such drugs as oxycodone, codeine, heroin, methadone, hydrocodone, fentanyl, and morphine. And all of these have similar health dangers. The effects on the body are serious. They include respiratory depression, constipation, papillary constriction, and cough, cough suppression, suppression, I'm sorry, dizziness, nausea, and urinary retention. Withdrawal symptoms include restlessness, muscle and bone pain, insomnia, diarrhea, and vomiting. Extended or chronic use may cause severe limit liver damage. Overdose effects include extreme drowsiness, muscle weakness, confusion, cold and clammy skin, pinpoint pupils, shallow breathing, a slowed heart rate, fainting, coma, and even death. Use of the prescription drugs for pain must be followed strictly by the doctor's guidelines. Please give your life to Jesus because he really loves you. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com to find faith-based resources. There is help, there is hope. And now we want to have, show you a clip of our other TV show, Addiction Free. Addiction Free is where we show, uh, have several people telling about the devastation in their life when they were in addiction, but then the restoration Amen. from a commitment, not just professing, but possessing right. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and how, what a difference God has made in their lives. And now they're even being used by the Lord. It's, a, it's amazing. I take my camera equipment and I travel across the United States to uh, get these testimonies so, to prove that Jesus is the answer. Because addictions are killing people. Mm. Welcome to Addiction Free. 
the TV and radio show that travels nationwide. I'm your host, Candy Rose. Addictions are an epidemic, destroying lives, causing families to be torn apart. But on this show, you'll hear from our guests testifying of their own freedom or those of a loved one. Psalms 107.2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. If you've been redeemed, walk the walk, so others will want who you have. Jesus. So anyway, here's, a, here's one of those testimonies. Hi, my name's Jeremy Hudson, and I just wanted to take a second to talk to you about how faith-based recovery programs have helped my life. I've been a part of the Father's House for about 10 years, and when I came to the Father's House, I came with a prescription opiate addiction um, to the tune of about $500 a week, um, hydrocodone, oxymorphone, methadone, anything I could get my hands on. Um, after a attempt at trying to end my life, I rededicated my life right here in the church that the Father's House is tied in with. Um, the Father's House and the Ark of Praise are coexisting, um, and because of those coexisting partnerships, I've been able to step out of the light of addiction or the darkness of addiction and into the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what I wanted to do today was just kind of encourage somebody, let them know that Jesus Christ is real and that he'll do the same thing for you that he's done for me. And I hope that someday you can look back on your life and see where the Lord picked you up like he picked me up, dusted you off like he dusted me off, and placed me in a position to impact other people's lives. Um, coming from felonies and probation and in and out of jail to now uh, going through our, our, pro, our ministry school and being associate pastor and program director of the Father's House, there's only one way that we can describe that, and that is by the touch of our Father on my life. Thank you. And once again, I am so excited to be here at John 316 in Charlotte, Arkansas. Well, I got saved and delivered from drugs and alcohol in 1995 at New Beginnings Ministry in Houston, Arkansas. Dennis and Peggy Hampton are the directors. And then fast forward to this will be uh, 19 years, May 5th at John 316 Ministry. We started in 2003. Um, and so that's, we have 180 men, 30 instructors that live here and, and have graduated. And we're blessed to have you, Candy, to come and interview us. Well, glad to be here. Uh, I suggest, I'll be putting the website on the screen, I suggest you go there and see what, how beautiful everything is. I mean, truly you'll be like, wow, God mm -hmm. has truly blessed this place. 200 acres, right. 180 men, and they're still wanting more. Matter of fact, if you need help or a loved one needs help, please give them a call because we're going to have the information, like I said, on the screen. My name is Parks Daughtry. I'm from South Haven, Mississippi. Um, I'm what you call a return at John 316. Um, I came in uh, originally on May the 5th, 2019, um, and graduated November 3rd, 2019. Um, went home and did well um, for a few months. and backslid into my old ways, stopped relying on Jesus. Um, since I've come back, I've, I've let go of a lot of things that I didn't let go the first time. Um, I grew up in a really abusive home, sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, mental abuse, uh, drug use. Um, started getting high with my mom when I was 14 years old. Um, been in and out of jail, in and out of rehabs. Um, I had a football scholarship offered to me in high school. Um, and threw that away over drug use. Um, our director, you know, says a word that we all hate to hear is potential. You know, I've always heard that my whole life. We've got so much potential, um, but it's just something that I never seem to be able to live up to. Um, you know, whenever I was uh, in high school, I met uh, my wife now. We've, we've been together 16 years. Um, She's loved me through grand jury trials, uh, felony charges, drug use. Um, 
And, you know, it got to the point to where in uh, April of 2019, she filed divorce papers on me, custody papers, and protection order against me. Um, I was homeless, living on the bathroom floor at a park in Horn Lake, Mississippi. Uh, it had gotten so bad that I was wrapping toilet paper around my arms and legs just to stay warm at night. Um, you know, that was about a month before I found, um, found out about John 316. Um, and coming here, I found that, uh, that, that the true power of life and the true purpose in life is Jesus Christ and, and living for Him. Um, the first time I came, I didn't, I didn't actually surrender everything to Jesus and for Jesus. Uh, I got my fulfillment and my happiness from my wife and kids. I turned my eyes off of Jesus, and I, and I believe that's why I backslid. But uh, I didn't come back this time because I was served any kind of papers. I came back this time because I was laying on a hotel room floor uh, dying, and I didn't want to die. Um, and I feel like the Holy Spirit played those memories back in my head of... Um, what he did for me here at John 3.16. So I'm back now helping other men come to know Christ, and for that I'm, I'm truly thankful. You know, I'm an evangelist, and I always give a salvation invitation and an altar call for people to come forward and get saved. and Not only get saved, but maybe rededicated if they messed up and they got into something and they, and they want to give their life back to the Lord. Well, you know, one time I entered uh, I uh, prayed for a lady that was like you, Barbara. She had actually been in church. She must have, I think she must have been about 60 years old. She was raised in church, been in church all her life. And when I gave the message that night and, and even asked if people, they weren't sure maybe if they were even saved, she came forward. Amen. And you may be like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe... Maybe you're not in any big sin, but you're just not sure. Kind of like Barbara's testimony when she was talking about Amen. that, being raised in church. Maybe you're in that position right now. Well, we want to give you that opportunity that you can know that you know that you belong to Jesus and that you can go to heaven and he will use your life now and your testimony. So we want to lead you in a prayer to make that commitment because see, it's a commitment. The Bible talks about not only confessing, but forsaking. Mm -hmm. Be willing to forsake and leave that old lifestyle behind. The word for that is repentance. So if you'd like to do that, we want to lead you in a prayer. Just say, Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. For loving me. For loving me. I'm willing. I'm, I'm willing, willing to leave the old life behind. To leave, leave the, the old, old life behind. And live for you, Jesus. And, and live, live for you, you, Jesus. With my whole heart. With, with my, my whole heart. heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank I love you. you. Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you so much. Amen. 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 And friends, please get into church and read your Bible. Talk to the one who loves you and who died for you, which is Jesus. Psalms 107.2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So now that you can walk the walk, go brag on Jesus. Amen. You know, you've heard about us, but now we would like to hear about you. If you go to our website, recoverytodaytv.com, there's an email button, and you can click on that button and tell us about you. Did you say this prayer and mean it? Have you had a life change? How's it going? We'd love to know. We, we'd like to hear your story now. Your prayers are also needed. Uh, like we said, we're on a, a, a lot of TV networks and, and in a lot of homes, um, and we really want these programs to make a difference in people's lives. Amen. That's why yes. we're doing this, because we care about each and yes. every one yes. of you, yes. and we want you to go to heaven. Yes. That's the, that's the greatest joy we have is when someone makes a decision and we know they're going to go to heaven too. Yes. So um, just go to the website. There's also a donate button. Uh, it takes a lot of money to put shows on TV on the different yes. networks. And we have partners that are so good to us and help us. And we really appreciate that. And we'd love for you to join us in this partnership and, and, and help by giving to be part of this ministry. Thank you. Amen. Yes, thank you. And why we want to remind you that Jesus loves you yes. and recovery is possible today and every day, the shepherd's way. Amen. Greetings in Jesus' name. Teen Challenge Women's Ministries has now 
changed its name to Adult and Teen Challenge of the Greater South. Why? Well, first of all, we're no longer just women. We have a men's center in Russellville, Arkansas. And of the Greater South, we've opened our fifth state. We are a faith-based recovery program. But first, it starts with a conversation. You reaching out. The only requirement to get in, absolute requirement to get in, is a desire to change. I'm Richie and Carly Willis, and we just want to tell you we both were in major addictions in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of major, major drugs and major, major addictions. We just want to tell you that today we have men's homes in Hot Springs called Solomon's Porch. There's three homes for men. Uh, we have our own church today, 411 Highland Street, called Highland Street Revival. We have a roofing company today called Willis & Son Roofing. We have crews working for us and people in the office, and we're just thankful. This is Pastor Tim and my lovely wife, Leslie. Uh, we pastor New Life Church, but we also run Project New Start Recovery Homes. Uh, these are homes designed to help men and women overcome addiction, bondages, we deal with any type of bondage that there is. We've been doing this for 20 years. God has just uh, literally changed lives through faith in Jesus Christ. Give us a call at 870-523-8413. God bless. I'm Lisa Haynes, Clinical Director for Shalom Recovery Centers. Shalom Recovery Centers is a nine-month Christ-centered program we provide services for both men and women, and we seek to serve those looking for help with life-controlling issues and addiction. Tell me how you came to know me. Was it at some preacher's plea? Were you all bound up with worry? When he came to set you free, Did it take you your whole lifetime to release the debt you owe? Or did you answer him the first time and relinquish all control? I need to hear somebody testify. I need to hear somebody say that you were lost and at the bottom, and you could not find your way, just when life had lost all meaning, and you wish that you could die, Jesus came to you that day. You invited him to stay. I need to hear somebody testify. Were you born to some good family? Who expects some good? Family? Hello, friends. This is Candy Rose, thanking you for tuning in. We hope you'll come back every week if you can, and tell your family and friends. We also hope you'll check out our other weekly show addiction free. Go to our website for more info, recoverytodaytv.com. Our theme scripture is John 8:32. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now knowing the truth is important, but only truth acted on brings freedom. Jesus loves you.